The doomsday argument is strange because it seems to rely on very weak empirical premises. So one way you could become convinced that the world is dangerous and might end soon is if you study particular risks and you think about nuclear weapons and designer pathogens and you study the details of that and you think this looks really scary. But the doomsday argument uh, is much more general and it says that whatever the prior probability of human extinction that you come up with after you have studied all these individual disaster scenarios, you should revise that upward uh, after reflecting on your position in the human species, conditional on two different hypotheses. So let me explain this by means of an analogy. Uh, suppose you have an urn with balls in it, yeah. and the balls in this urn are numbered from one, two, three upwards to the total number of balls. And you are not sure whether the urn contains 10 balls or a million balls. It's a big urn and it could be almost empty or it could be full with balls. So you've got to guess which one it is, but you get one clue. You get to pick one ball from this urn and pick it up and look at it. And so you do that and you find that it's number seven. Now, in this urn example, picking ball number seven gives you very strong evidence that the ball is the 10 ball urn rather than the million ball urn because it's much more likely you would get number seven if there are only 10 balls than if there are a million. And so that's uncontroversial, but here is the analogy. Think of the two different urns uh, as two different hypotheses about what will happen to the human species. So one hypothesis is that we will go extinct soon, maybe in a few decades, and there will have been a total of, I don't know, 100 billion humans will ever have lived from the, the rise of our species to its end. And another hypothesis is that will survive, you know, colonize the galaxy and maybe we'll live for, for millions and millions of years. And there might have been a total of a uh, hundred trillion humans in total, just pick two numbers. And suppose that after having studied the specific risk, you think it's 50-50. And then corresponding to picking this ball, number seven, you, you think of yourself as a random sample from all humans that will ever have lived. And the number is your birth rank your place in the sequence of all humans. So, so your number would be around about 70 billion. Or so that's how many people have come before you. And so the idea is that the probability that you should find yourself with birth rank 70 billion is much greater if there will only be 100 billion humans in total than if there will be 100 trillion for the same reason as in the urn case. So the conclusion of the doomsday argument is that whatever the prior probability of doom soon versus doom late, after reflecting on this, you should sort of up your probability in doom soon uh, to take into account of your low birth rank. So whatever probabilities may cause human extinction based on nuclear weapons mm -hmm. or asteroids or, or biological warfare, whatever those probabilities are, you're saying that the doomsday argument increases those by some factor. That's right which depends on the exact numbers involved. So that's the idea behind the doomsday argument. And intuitively, it seems it must be wrong. Yeah. Because you seem to get a lot of information from no sort of evidence, as it were. And there have been a lot of attempts to explain why the doomsday argument fails. And when you look more carefully at these attempts to explain why it's wrong, they, they tend to fail. Now, my view is that ultimately, the doomsday argument is inconclusive. But not for any simple trivial reason, but for, for deep methodological reasons that, that have to do with observation selection theory and the way you should reason about these things. But the, the idea in the doomsday argument that does the work is that in some sense you should think of yourself as if you were a randomly selected sure. observer or a random human. And I think there is an element of truth to that. It's not as silly idea as it might appear. If, but these arguments that support that assumption if you look carefully, don't support strictly the assumption that you should think of yourself as a random human from all humans that will ever have lived. It, it supports a weaker assumption that you should think of yourself as a random human from some suitable set of humans, not necessarily the whole human species. Um, and if you, if you pick a more narrow reference class, you can avoid the doomsday argument. It sounds though that uh based upon people's concern already about the possibility of human extinction, the doomsday argument at least puts an additional caution into how humanity should behave. I, I would put it slightly differently. If, if the doomsday argument were sound, then it would put a huge extra caution. If, if I am correct 
uh, and believing it's not sound, then it might not actually sure. carry any weight at all. Now, if we are uncertain about whether I'm right or not, then we might give it a little credence and it might affect our you know, probability estimate slightly. Well, based on what it's talking about, it's not talking about whether we go on vacation next month. It's talking about human extinction. We probably should have a little bit extra caution. My view is that we should have exactly the degree of caution that the evidence warrants. And at least if we were rational, there would be no need to, to sort of hype up the probability of a disaster because even a tiny probability of humanity going extinct ought to be enough to motivate us to take whatever action is needed to reduce that within reasonable limits.